my name is Rachel Daly and I am a textile artist. Um, with my work, I primarily focus on two things, which is the technique and the narrative of the piece. Um, the technique is something that I, I slowly over the years came up with as I worked a lot with textiles and embroidery, um, but I did find them quite limiting. Um, I studied sculpture um, back in London, and I like to experiment a lot with materials. And what I realized was I wanted to imitate the, the stitch effect, the embroidery effect, but using oil paint, it allows me to work on a much larger scale, and um, the sort of possibilities are much more endless as well. And I can play around a lot more with ideas. Um, each piece um, takes a long, long time. Each stitch is an individual stitch using oil paint. And then the overall effect creates almost like a embroidery that you can wear. And once I, I sort of perfected that technique, which in lots of ways is very technical, I, I could go off on the other side of things, which was important to me, which was the narrative of the piece. This series is a, a group of, of women who are complex and troubled and brilliant. To be honest, my inspiration for, for most things is people um, and the personalities of people, the, the lives that people have, the ordinary and complex lives that people have. Um, and I wanted to place this group of friends um, within a setting in my mind, something like a Shakespeare in Love party, mask party, which would allow them to wear my embroidery pieces. A piece is um, called Minerva, and it's one of a series of three ladies. Um, they, the narrative, again, behind it is that they, they all know each other. They're all at this rather avant-garde, eccentric party. Um, so I wanted her headpiece to be very, very dramatic. Um, and so I've, I've created a sort of mixture of traditional embroidery patterns mixed in with, with feathers as a headset. Um, this took me a long, long time. Each, each stitch is individual. And as I create one stitch with the oil paint, I have to put down um, what I'm using and pick up the next color to create the next stitch. So this can take hours and hours and it almost becomes sort of automatic and you go into a rather sort of meditative state because once I have set out the, the format of the piece, it, it's, it's very much um, just actually picking up the paint. I, I can do it almost without thinking, um, but it is a very like laborious, time-consuming, repetitive process. This piece is um, named Tilly, and actually the uh, black oil paint here is how I began this process of experimenting with oil to, to kind of imitate the stitch. So this was one of the first works that I, that I did, um, and I, I loved how it really created that sense of featheriness. Um, and again, you when I do this process, I have to have a very, very steady hand because one mistake um, means I would have to start again. So I have to almost go into like a slightly meditative state. I, I usually create the, um, the flower first and then I go in with the black oil paint. They, they, the amount of oil that I use means that it, it takes quite a while to dry, but I, I try and mix it with um, something that helps it dry slightly, slightly faster, but it, it remains very, very delicate for a good few weeks. Um, this lady is called Coco, um, and she's a more kind of recent work, and I've started to experiment with um, showing a little bit more of the face and, and allowing the narrative to become a bit more center stage. And again, um, I had a lot of fun with this. This um, hat here that she's wearing is um, inspired by an exhibition in Chicago um, at the Institute there where they had an exhibition on African um, traditional beading and embroidery. Um, and I thought Coco was the perfect lady to wear it. 
this piece is called Sally, and again, it's one of my um, more recent pieces, and you're able to see um, more of Sally's face. Um, and I started to experiment with the idea of creating not just a headpiece, but um, clothing as well for her to wear. So she's very much uh, at the party, and I love that she looks at you and has that sort of rather knowledgeable gaze. Uh, she's she's one of she's one of my favourites. I think just because she has so much personality, and I really really enjoyed um, creating uh, the embroidered um, clothing that she's wearing and using slightly different colours, which are more like the purples and the pinks. And of course, um, I wanted her with the horns to create that slightly more um, ethereal, otherworldly sort of effect. Um, these two pieces, Miss Neptune and Artemis, um, I love when they're placed near each other. I was experimenting here with a slightly different colour palette, um, using like a more sort of bluey backdrop, which I think sort of changed the atmosphere of the piece. Um, I wanted it to, to mimic the, the blues of their headscarves as well, and a slightly more, um, a, maybe more of a somber feel to them. This piece, um, Madame Cuckoo, I was experimenting with a slightly different format. I've, I've used four canvases placed together. I wanted to try and imitate a slightly more sort of monumental feel. It, it's really a throwback to my days in Italy. I was brought up in, in Tuscany, and a lot of the churches, which we visited a lot, would have uh, altar pieces of the Madonna and Child and they would always have it in four panels to create that slightly more sort of monumental feel to it. And I wanted Madame Cuckoo to have a bit more of a distant feel, less approachable feel than some of my other pieces, and I was trying to create that by dividing up the canvases. This is um, Daria. This is one of my um, more recent pieces. I love her facial expression. She's just got uh, dressed up and, and she's feeling super confident and she almost looks slightly ethereal, which is in juxtaposition of what she's actually wearing, which is sort of fun and jovial, but she has that slightly um, serious expression, which I love, the two combined together. This piece is uh, named Lady Peacock. She's similar to Madame Cuckoo, but she is only on one canvas, and that was really purposeful. I wanted to create a piece that was a little bit more intimate, a little bit softer. I wanted, when I printed her face, I wanted it to be gentle as well, and a little bit more intimate. I've, I've used the, my sort of original technique with just the black to create those sort of feathery, feathery feel to it, and then focused in on um, the blue flowers, which again, I wanted to try and keep it as similar tones as possible. These two pieces, Mickey and Mittens, are a really fun pair that I, I sort of started with, again, with that feel of them being at a, almost like a Shakespeare in love uh, party, mass party. And I feel like they have so much personality, both of them. I, I started uh, this kind of effect of trying to make them look almost like they were wearing a sequins outfit. And I wanted to cover as much face as possible uh, so that when the viewer looks at them, they can almost see themselves or, or a friend um, and place themselves in that party, in that sort of rather avant-garde setting. This piece is named Jane, and actually she's, she's a rather important um, piece within the series. Uh, the pattern that I've used here was inspired by a skirt um, that when I was in San Francisco, I, I saw and I perched this, and I wasn't planning to wear it. I was just really, really drawn to the embroidery, and that 
skirt almost started off this whole obsession with trying to mimic embroidery and textiles through oil paint. So she's a very, very important piece in, in the journey that I started um, getting to this point and getting to, to kind of understand and work with this technique. Um, this is the pattern of the skirt here. And it was one of my favorite pieces uh, to make as well.